when that sun's up, it's gonna be almost unbearable. One's definitely type two fun. Cramping's real bad now. Feels like I'm dying. I've never ever drunk a can of Coke so fast in my life. I need a coffee just thinking about that. This is my story of the 2024 Peaks Challenge. If you've been following along, welcome back. If you've just joined the channel, welcome, and I hope you enjoy the story. For those of you unfamiliar, the Peaks Challenge is a 235 kilometer one day Grand Fondo event in Falls Creek in Australia. It is considered by some as one of the hardest one day fondos in the world. Not only the distance makes it hard, but it is also a day with over 4,000 meters of elevation. It's a timed event. You have a maximum of 13 hours to complete the course. My target was 10 hours. Pulled in for the night in Canberra, try and break up the trip a little bit. Then four hours today, we'll do five hours tomorrow. Hopefully it means I can feel a little bit fresher on race day. It's time to get some coffee, time to get second breakfast and get on the road. Hopefully we can get down there early enough and get a bit of a ride in before we have to do all the registration things. Let's do it. Can I get a like flat white? Uh, what do you have? Long black? Long black. I don't think trucks are meant to be that way up. Got to try and get sorted for when we get into Falls Creek Village. There's a number of things that I've got to do. I think the major cutoff time is around about 5 p.m. So we're pretty on track. I think we're going to be getting in around about 2 p.m. First thing is bike inspection. Seems a bit weird to me, um, but I guess some people's bikes are in different states of management. Uh, so we get the bike checked, make sure brakes are good, uh, make sure tires are good, I guess, these sorts of things. Once we've had the bike check, we can then do our registration, pick up our rider pack. That's all about getting the valet bags and getting those valet bags packed. Uh, there's a mandatory rider briefing that's at 5.30. I guess that's just where we find out about where we should not crash and uh, where we should be careful and, and get a bit of a G up for the ride, I think. Uh, and then valet bags need to be back in their hands by 7 p.m. I'm gonna try and squeeze in a ride in there. Just get the legs moving. We've been in the car for five hours today, so hopefully just get the blood pumping and get the legs feeling good for tomorrow. So yeah, organized. Cool. It is cool. I feel like we're in the middle of nowhere and we're trying to like find our way through all this shit to like drop our stuff off. It's like, what's gonna happen with the cars like way the fuck away from us? And like we have to walk everywhere. It's kind of nuts. Like this feels like overkill. Very simple process of just checking into a fucking place to stay. Where is it? Is it there? There it is. All right, where do we park? I think this is it. Okay, first lesson learned today is you can't actually go through the bike check and then onto registration unless you have all of your equipment. So I don't have my lights and I don't have all of that gear. So without that, they can't pass me for checks. So I gotta walk back up the hill and I gotta get my bike fully kitted up for tomorrow. Good times. 
See you in a minute. After putting my bike together and going through bike check, registration was pretty seamless. The lines were long, but they moved quickly. Good chats whilst I was in the line. Got my riders pack, valet bags, and was back up the hill to have some lunch. Valley bags now. This, this feels like a, a source of great confusion. Well, for me at least, a lot of the discussion I've seen about it. You got three bags. Two of them can take food only. You don't get anything back. One of them can have clothes and food, and then you can pack stuff back into it. Anyway, this is what I'm doing. So I got the first bag. I got a cliff bar in there. I got another big gel pouch. Uh, of this one here is the pack that you can return. This goes in the middle one here the middle dinner plane pack, right? So I've got a change of jersey and, and a base layer if that's something that I decide I want. I've got another gel in there. Um, I know there's a fair bit of food at that stop, so I'm not too worried about food. And then the final one, right? Like the last hurrah. I got another cliff bar. I got another gel. I got a can of Coke because they reckon it can be hard to actually buy a can of Coke at Angler's Rest. So hopefully that little caffeine kick's going to help out. Have I done it right? I don't know. Okay, checked in. Registration done, valet bags considered, lunch eaten. Now I'm just trying to get out and spin the legs before we go into prep mode. It's a real vibe down here. I wish Sydney was like this. Bikes everywhere, everybody in the zone, everybody wanted to talk about cycling. I can only imagine it's going to be a very different vibe by the time I'm coming through this section tomorrow. It is just such picturesque country though. The lake, the trees, the flora is different. It's like I'm in a different country. Can't wait to be amongst this track tomorrow. Welcome back to all of you and thank you to everyone who's coming in for the first time to challenge yourself to what is without doubt one of the toughest road races, single day road races in the world. Uh, there will be numerous police around uh, tomorrow. Please obey the uh, instructions they give you. As already been touched upon, the road condition is that you need to be mindful, especially early in the morning heading down to Falls Creek. A reminder that we are in the high country and the weather can change quickly. And often the weather forecast can be inaccurate. That said, like today, and we do know that it is going to be very warm in the peak of the day. The queues of bike check and ride of the pack collection, they were long. That's because we have 2,000 riders here on the mountain today, which is just awesome and it's the biggest event we've had in many, many years up here. But also equally essential is that 10% of each for tomorrow are female. This is a record for tech I met some guys in the line today as I was going in for registration. They asked me a question. They, they said, why are you doing this? I thought this was a really good question. Why am I doing all of this? At first, I, my response was, it's just a natural progression. You know, I've been on the bike now for a couple of years. I've done the Fondos. I've done the Maxi Fondos. I've pushed out and done the 200k ride. What's next, right? What is regarded as a real challenge? The Peaks Challenge. Uh, through all my social media and, and the networks that I follow, everything kind of points here as being one of Australia's, if not Australia's hardest, most challenging Fondo event. But I guess after I pondered a little bit further, why am I doing this? It's probably just to see if I can. Maybe it's for nobody else other than to prove to myself that this is something I'm capable of doing. The morning was an absolute blur. Kidding up, making sure I had everything that I planned to pack, trying to fit in two breakfasts and getting my bike ready to roll out the door. 
I didn't manage to capture any footage, but fortunately my roommate managed to capture the moment. I'm not sure if you can see much at this point. It's pretty early, pretty dark, but it's PQ. I'm gonna have to fight my way through all of these people and try and get to my wave. This is it, no turning back now. Heavy logistics. Mining up with the nine to 10 hour group. It's starting to pack in now. Everyone's excited. This event is legendary. It is so deep, so brilliant. Tomorrow is a marathon. Lost the street. They want to be called Red Sox, but treat them as a pin song. the descent now. Passed a lot of people. Moved the wrong way up a bunch, I think. I was really worried about my descending skills, but I think they came up better than I thought. Definitely in the uh, upper echelon of things. First climb now, smallest of the three. How you going, buddy? Fantastic. <laughs> I share his passion right now, but we'll see later. I think the key is not going too hard on this one. It's really thinned out. Kind of just dancing between bunches now. I want to make sure I'm well positioned when I do get to the top. 2.3 kilometers left on this one. Trying to keep it in zone three. Don't want to overdo it. It's hot. I've already stripped back on my gear. When that sun's up, it's gonna be almost unbearable. Mr. Hollywood Lee Turner just blew past. He was the 10 hour ride leader. It's a little disconcerting for some. I followed him for a bit to find out. He's on his way to the toilet. So it's probably a good opportunity to get ahead of the 10 hour marker if we keep with him and blow past. Coming up on the top of Tuong now. All right, down, down, down. 
The Tuong descent was too fast for me to get my camera out. The pack had thinned out a lot. I was riding with about four or five other riders and we were railing it through the turns. Down low, sprinting out of the corners. It was pretty rad. Down the Tuong descent now. Managed to pound on a little bunch. Moving at a good pace. Let's try and stick with these guys as long as we can. It's hard to capture the true mania of these rest stops. This is the first one and there's a lot of riders converging on it at the same time. Find your valet bag, get some water, pack your snacks, and get back on the road whilst trying to juggle some nutrition. Oh, it's absolute chaos. Bikes everywhere. People trying to get water. Ripping bags up. Good stuff. Try and get a little bit of this cliffy in me. Time to hit Hotham. I'm about to do it. I'm about to finish. I'm about to finish a cliff bar in zone five. <sighs> Easing into the climb, sitting okay around about sweet spot power. A little bit higher heart rate than I want in zone four, not three. I think I've got a little, I don't know. Thanks for the wheel. A few homies behind me. They'll be, they'll come in handy when we get over the hill. <laughs> oh, it's not flat. I'll give you a pull on the boss flat. Sounds like a deal. So apparently we're approaching the Meg now. Oh, it looks bad. It's a bit of a wall. That one's definitely type 2 fun. I mean, worth it, right? It's huge. Starting to feel a few aches and pains through here. Saw her undercarriage. Legs are tired, the old back's tired. This time back there was 23 kilometers to Mount Hotham, so. Or maybe a third of the way up here. If I understand correct, it flattens out for a little bit now before it steepens up right at the end. Just gonna try and keep the heart rate low. Found that flat section. Trying to recover, hug a wheel. This is the final turn of Hotham now. It really starts to change gears. Gradient kicks up. The rest period is over.
art little section. So iconic. It's all the photos of Mount Hotham and cycling. And it's damn brutal. Real struggle. Lowest gear standing just to stay on the incline. Heat is out a little bit now, which is good. Catching my breath. I guess that's maybe where having something bit bigger than a 30 on the back might have been useful. I want to say that's the top. You could be wrong though. Okay, that wasn't the top. I think this is. That was brutal. We were here almost at lunch. This is where I met Jeremy. He was also targeting 10 hours, and our initial conversations were about how we were tracking the time. He would become my riding partner and a great source of motivation for almost the entirety of the race. Thanks for your support, mate, especially for dragging my ass out of rest stops. Ooh. Pit stops, another gnarly fucking mad rush. Chucking stuff everywhere, packing the bag, slapping some sunscreen on, trying to get some food. I've still got like a chicken roll in my hand. The dude I wanted to ride with was just in and out, I lost him. But anyway, filled bottles, eating a little bit. Feel a little recovery, but back on the road. So I feel like I'm crossing the desert now. Shit. Yeah. It's, it's pretty intense. We're kind of just picking up bunches. I think we got a good little train of homies back here. A few more up the road. Tight. Climbs hurt a lot. <sighs> Keep going. 160k, so I mean, uh, I didn't really want to stop here, but I desperately needed some water. Quick stop, fill the bottles, get back on the road. I mean, complete hell. This climb is just eating me up. The sun's beaming down. Only just pushing 200 watts. I'm spaced out. Left hamstring's cramping. I'm just head down. Trying to zone out. Saving grace, we caught a bunch. It's helping us move a little bit faster. Still just as hard, but getting a bit more speed. Through Angler's Rest. Smashed a mini can of coke. Fill the bottles back on the road. Cramping's real bad now. Pace is real slow. Just holding on. I think this is where the hell begins. I think I'm approaching the famed what the fuck corner. Any minute now, we're gonna hook around a corner. I'm gonna have some 10% ramps. Am I ready? I don't know. Let's give it a go. Primary is there for a reason. Feels like I'm dying. 
there's another red ram just coming up. I'm recovering on yellow rams. I have to stop. It's just unrelenting. It's so hot. It's just no respite. It's a carnage up here. There's people everywhere stopped. I just need a second. I said I wasn't gonna do this, but here we are. The 9% ramps are just, I can't escape. I can't get any respite. I can't recover. Even walking is not recovery. Okay, I'm riding again. Mainly out of necessity. My feet are so blistered from walking. That, that's kind of ruled out now. We gotta ride the rest. Trap yard gate is in like five kilometers. Fuel up there, and then the final pinch. Believe it or not, I'm still a chance getting this done in under 10 hours. I feel like I've just escaped hell. And my reward is a can of coke. I don't think I've ever drunk a can of coke so fast in my life. All right, on stretch. We can still make this. Two fifteen. Just gone nine hours, the clock's ticking. I've got like 55 minutes to get this done under my goal time of 10 hours. Okay, that's the end of the climb. Hopefully we can just roll in home now. Can we still make it under 10? We can, but only if we keep pushing. This was my exchange with Jess. In the final 10 kilometers, she was my last wheel to make pace with. Seeing her determination gave me what I needed to muster one last kick for the line. We just passed where Joe and I got to yesterday. On stretch, baby. what I needed right when I needed it. Oh god, my legs are dead. No, thank you so much. You are awesome. What did you go for? Like, where did you start? You started 10? I started in the 9th. Sorry, I'm trying to get the mic to shut up. I started in the 9th. I had a friend that started in the 9th. I was in the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just wanted to get under 10, so Same. I did it. <laughs> Same. First time? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, first and last. <laughs> it's like, if I go under 10, that's it. Tell me about it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. It was Thanks so good. Thank you. We printed your tag for you and so it's Okay. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed my recount of the hardest ride ever. Everybody I spoke to after the event said the same thing. The temperature on the day made the event the hardest in the history of the Peaks Challenge. Given all of this, I'm pretty happy to have completed my goal and finished the race in less than 10 hours. Thanks to everyone that helped me along the way. 
Congratulations to everyone who finished the race. Did you do peaks this year? Have you done peaks before? Let me know how it worked out for you in the comments. Other than that, until next time, see ya!